Well, we've seemingly done the impossible. I've already shown the uh, footage of the <coughs> the 105 in push pull, and you can see the gap is very, very small. But I don't know if you're going to be able to see in there. Nothing is clashing or going in the fan blades. Now, every every video I've seen of the the Air 240 only has this fan in in here. And they were having the pipes from the 105 or the H100 come down and then in this way. Now these are far too long. So I got some thinking last night that we use some tie wraps to tidy it up. And you can see what we've done. We've got a nice bend down there in the tube. Now nothing's under strain. These connections up here are all fine. Nothing is, um, nothing is too tight. You see everything can still move around all right. Um, but that looks so much neater. And we got the second AF in the top. So we've got awesome coming in. Excuse the shaky camera. We've got awesome coming in. And then we've got awesome fans at the top here to get rid of all the heat. Now, of course, the 980 blows out the back anyway. Um, while I've got you here, I want to talk about this from Corsair. This clip here is their way of kind of putting the graphics card in. Now I have to say I don't like it. It's um, it's very problematic to be honest. It would be much easier without this here. So you can just slip the cards in um, as it is trying to get a reference 980 and there was an absolute pain in the ass um, because they kind of, when you look around the back, the card clips down here um, and I had to actually use a pair of pliers to bend this round on the card, and that, that, bearing in mind that's an almost a 500 pound graphics card, they want to be using pliers to bend shit um, to get it to fit. So maybe I've got a slightly defective unit. I mean, it's in there and it's not coming out anytime soon, but if I ever want to do SLI, fuck. Yeah, so that's my only negative so far with the Corsair um, with, this, with this Air 240 is um, <clears throat> that is an absolute nightmare. So, quick look at the back. We're not going to use 80mm fans. Why would I? They're too noisy. We've got a couple of the drives in. I haven't done the wiring yet. <clears throat> that is going to be the riveting part three, I would imagine. <clears throat> right, you're going to have to excuse the untidy, massive wad of cables in here at the moment because I haven't got around to sorting it out. <clears throat> I just want to show you the, the NXTC grid. Now, I've got it stuck on with some Velcro. Unfortunately, it's white. I didn't have any black stuff. But this is dead handy. We've got all the all of the cables, which I am going to tidy up. So we've got the three fans. <clears throat> I've split two of the um, SPs on the front um, into one, and then we've got the two others, and we've got the two roof fans coming in into the back side of it here. So as you can see, it is alive. Um, if you can hear that loud whirring noise, that's a, a disk drive I've got. It's not the actual PC. But those AF120s, they are exactly what I wanted. Very low light. Ever since run in. So this is the setup. We're installing Windows at the moment. External, excuse the mess. External drive. We're going to be installing Windows. Excuse the shaky cam. I know I've done all this previously, but install now. This takes ages and ages and ages and ages as we know. So I'm just going to let this run and play out and then I'll, uh, I'll come back when we start doing the rest. Right, the next step, motherboard, software and utilities. Uh, yeah, whatever. So we're going to get lots and lots of shit on the screen as it installs a load of all rubbish as we know. Um, <laughs> but obviously we don't want Norton. No, we don't want any of that. We've got the driver's utilities, uh, all your drivers. Um, for your raiders on there as well, your manual and everything else. So we're going to install everything we need to do. So this is the boring bit really, you know, the, the fun bit is building it and making sure everything works and putting it all together and then we get the dull installing all of the updates. So it's going to take a little while, but it's a necessary step and I suppose I should stop moaning and enjoy it, the same as I enjoy everything else. Next, GeForce Experience. I am using a NVIDIA card, so GeForce Experience automatically downloads the latest driver for me. We'll do a clean install on it. Not that we have to, because there aren't any drivers installed anywhere anyway. But um, I always do a clean install on this stuff, so you go to Custom Installation, and that'll install the latest one. 
Right, we're going to have a quick look at the BIOS on the um, Asus Z79, Z90, Z, Z, Z on the Griffin. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's been a very long day. Um, and the good thing about this Asus board is you can go in, into the um, BIOS straight from the dash. So it'll take a second while it says it's restarting. So instead of having to restart and then bash the hell out of uh, delete or F2, we can just go in this way. Okay, so I hope this is picking up okay. This is the first screen you get to. At the top we have all the information about the um, about the board, the BIOS version. We've got all the information about the chip. It says it's running at 4, well that's the default speed for it as well. Um, but it's actually, this one's up at 4.7 at the moment. Uh, and then the memory we've got running at 24. Now the DRAM is nothing in one two says it's one three three but it isn't um, and this one says the same but it isn't uh, XMP is on but um, so CPU fan manual fan tuning as you know I'm using the next grid so I haven't bothered with any of this at all this is in fact the H105 pump running here at the moment so when we go into actually before we go into advanced mode you've got the easy tuning wizard okay. Now, what this does, it shows you what your current temperatures are, uh, what your what your current specs are, and it it says, judging by what components you're using, the overclock it's going to give you. Now, do not use this because when I used it, I just wanted to see it put the voltage up at one point three two, and had it running at four point, almost four point nine. But 1.32, and that is ridiculous. That you, did, I mean, this chip doesn't need that much voltage. So um, I would always recommend doing it manually. Um, so we'll just back out of that. So we go to advanced mode. And when you look at the screen to start with, this shows all the BIOS information again on here. Total memory, memory frequency. It's got the date and the time and everything else. But for what we need to do, we need to look in AI tweaker because this is where you would do any overclocking. This is where you set your RAM up. So um, I have covered this previously, but when you come into, um, when you fit your RAM in these boards, it will always default to 1333, no matter what speed you put in the well, unless it's lower, obviously. Um, so you need to come in. And the Corsair has uh, what they call extreme memory profiles, which it already has all the timings and everything built into it. So um, you would go, you click this from auto to XMP and then profile one, and then that picks up the 10, 12, 12, 31 at 1.65 and it sets your RAM at 2400. Um, now if you are going to manually overclock before you set that to XMP change that to manual on there and then you come down here and you go to sync all cores um, so you have to put take it from auto put it on sync all cores and then in here you type in the multiplier number you want so for example you want it at 47 like I've got you press 47 basically um, or 46 or whatever. A good rule of thumb with Haswell, um, if you, I mean, it runs, it runs at um, 44 with maximum turbo. Um, so you can have a look at what voltage that's running, and then have a look at making any adjustments from there. Um, so we haven't touched anything else. What we have done, we've put the um, voltage, which is normally on auto, we changed it to manual, and down here we've put it at 1.21. Um, because I know this chip will run at 4.7 at 1.21 um, you press enter and that's done it's easy as that so we'll have another little look through so advanced we don't need to go into any of this because um, well because we don't um, you can monitor your CPU temperature motherboard temperature and everything else down through here you can change um, how things boot uh, there are tools so you can um, one in there at 4.6, got 4.7 here saved as well. So like I say, don't use, don't use this, whatever you do, don't use the tuning wizard, um, because it just put far too much amperage through. So we're going to exit, you would normally hit save, but we haven't saved anything. So we're just going to discard changes. Easy as that. It is a very intuitive system. But just again, like I say, don't use the, the overclock settings on this one. 
Um, I know they have the five-way optimization on other boards. It doesn't come bundled with the Griffin, but it does come with the saber tooth. Um, so yeah, if you're going to use the five-way optimization, fair play, but don't use it on this one. Along with Asus boards, you also get AI Suite 3. Now I've used this previously on my Z77 saber tooth board, and it was very good. Um, what they've done with the Asus board is it's basically based around thermal. Um, so your thermal tuning, this shows all your current temperatures and everything else. Now, if I was to go into thermal tuning, it, it would it says, and I'll read it, based on your system's current thermal settings, thermal radars, thermal blah 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 blah, blah what it does, it, it basically checks what you've got um, and it makes its own rules. But <laughs> I, I pressed it to find out what was happening and it actually changed the speed of the pump on the uh, H105 and it lowered it, um, almost halved it, um, which isn't what we want. Um, so we made sure we went in there and changed it. Um, Fan control, I've, I've only got one fan plugged into it, so uh, if you had system fans in, you can have a look through all your chassis fans and everything through here. Thermal status, um, it's a little warm, so we've got it good. Uh, the VGA zone is up at excellent. You can record all your uh, temperatures, um, CPU voltage and everything else as well, and the CPU fan as well. And the digi power control, this, uh, I've got the Obviously, we're massively overclocked, so we've got everything very high here at the moment. Um, and the DRAM frequency, I haven't had to touch because that's all default. Little box at the top, we've got thermal radar, we've got USB 3 boost. Uh, the system information obviously shows all the information about everything on here. It shows the CPU, it shows the memory and all the speeds. We'll go back to it. USB, -C, uh, USB charger push notice, I don't know what that is to be honest, uh, flashback utility if necessary, uh, easy update for updating everything, this tells us the version of what we've got. There you go, it's a handy bit of kit and it would be nice if they did include the five way optimization that everyone's banging on about with the other Aces boards, I don't know why it doesn't come bundled with the Griffin because um, I mean it would be great if it did. Right, there's a few programs we're going to need when we're um, making sure everything is stable and running correctly. First of which is CPU Z. Now Aces actually bundle this on their motherboards now. Um, it's certainly come with the Griffin one, which is fantastic. And what this does, this shows you, just zoom up a bit on that. This shows you everything we need to know. So we've got the i7 has well, um, socket 115 LGA. We've got it at the moment at 1.21 volts. And it shows it here at 4.7. Um, I've, I've had it higher, but I'm not used to overclocking as well, so it did get a little toasty, but I mean we had up at 4.8, almost, well, we had up at 5, but it got too hot, so I decided to wind it back down again. Um, but this also shows the memory we've got in here, so we've got the Corsair in there, um, XMP profile, 1200 times 2 equals 24. So there we go. We're also, you're going to need something to monitor your temperatures, so we'll just pan back out. And we've got real temp. Now what real temp does, we'll zoom up again. And here you can see what we've got. And this shows the core temperatures, all four cores. It makes you wonder if I might have to reseat it because this core's always slightly hotter, although some do run slightly hotter. It shows the minimum and the maximum on there as well. So we'll need that. And we're also going to need prime. Now what Prime does is it absolutely stresses the backside of your processor. I'll show you, we just run a very basic. There we go, let me do it properly. We'll just run a very basic test on it. So this is just one of the blend tests, and what this do, does, like I said, is it really, really stresses the um, CPU to make sure it's stable. Now when you first build it, before you overclock, I would recommend running this. People say 24, I'd never bother, 12 is normally enough, um, to make sure you don't get any blue screens, make sure it's stable. As you can see up here, it's just under 7, but it is running at 4.7, um, and the temperatures, happy days. So we'll stop, all workers, we'll close that. Right, so, onto the graphics card. When you're overclocking graphics card, you're going to need a couple of tools. Obviously, you're going to need something to monitor it. And this is GPU Z from Tech Power Up. I'll 
just zoom in. Now again, this is very similar to CPU-Z, so what this shows is the uh, card and all of the rubbish that you're probably never ever going to want to know. Um, it shows the current GPU clock um, and the current memory clock, the default clock, now this is the super clock card so they have um, put about 120 on it um, and this is the default memory again there and this is the boost on here. You're also going to need something to overclock with and for the sake of this I'm using MSI Afterburner. Now MSI Afterburner You've got core voltage at the top, now you can muck around with this if you want. Um, I, ha I haven't unlocked it because I don't actually need to, but you can go and unlock it. Uh, the power limit, uh, when you put this to 125%, it means the card will pull up to 125% of its power without you having to change anything down here. Um, but, because I know what this 980 would do, we've got 120 on the core and 300 on the memory. And this is not even close to what my um, Asus Strix will do. The Strix I've actually got running up at uh, 8000. Um, this is at 7.6 um, and we've got the core up to a 14.61 I think on the Strix which is much better so there we go um, and then of course if you want to run Valley let me zoom out so you can see Valley or if you want to run uh, Fire Strike for example you can see how well it's doing and of course the great thing about these tools is as well it shows every change you make we're going to have a look at show. the um, grid software so this is the NZXT grid um, now the software is called CAM from uh, NZXT you download it straight from their website and basically what this is doing at the moment it's got the um, computer details on the left we've got the temperature of the core at the moment or the cores at the moment GPU you can see all your usages and Clam, Clam, Clam. <laughs> Cam does use quite a lot of uh, RAM, and I believe N uh, ZXT are working on reducing the amount it uses. Um, but there we go. This is just the heat there we can see. Now what you can do as well when you go into Grid Plus. Now this um, this shows the current settings. So we've got the fans up at 45 at the moment, and the temperature the of the GPU again is idling at 28, which is really really good. Uh, if you had one of the Krakens, you can also manage it through this as well. Um, so I'm just going to show you what happens when we um, start up a benchmark. The fan speed will ramp up, you see the temperature come up, and the, we've got it set to performance. So the hotter the CPU gets, the higher the fans ramp up. It's a great little tool, I have to say. and. Um, very very handy for a small case that doesn't have a built-in fan controller um, so you can see I mean when it gets hot it ramps up it's silent you, I know well I certainly can't hear it at the moment I very much doubt the camera's picking it up but it does work very very well so we'll just stop prime close it and you'll see as it starts to cool down the fans ramp down with it Okay, so there are, um, you can get notifications down here. You can turn on when you want your fans at a certain speed. When it gets to a certain temperature, um, it will give you a notification. We're not too fussed about that. Back to basic. All in all, it's a, it's a great little bit of software. Um, especially like me, if you can't be asked to have every single fan running through the motherboard. Um, you just have it running through this. It works really, really well.